Hi, it's Susan Vincent, um, small business marketing copywriter here in Stanton, Virginia. Uh, and I am thrilled to have with me today Anna Fluelling with Dunlap Law. Um, I She works with small businesses almost exclusively. And I wanted to interview her because I thought she would bring a really great perspective to small businesses and ideas and ways that you may want to be able to reach out to her and talk to her more about your business. So Anna, I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and I see we have somebody else who is co-starring today. Yeah, this is my dog, Dagby. She's going <laughs> to join in this one. <laughs> Great. Well, we love animals. No problem. Um, I want to start with asking you to me, a, a, a big question, because there's lots of law firms around. How is Dunlap Law different from the traditional law firm that we think of? So there are a couple of ways. Um, for one, um, and the thing I'm most proud of is that we are a women-led law firm. Um, we're one of the few in the state that are non-solo, that are all women or majority women. Um, and for that's for us, that's a huge deal because it allows us to kind of meet clients where they are. I think that's a big difference that happens um, with female attorneys. Not that male attorneys don't do that, but I think we just have a capacity to be a little bit more collaborative um, and meet people on the ground because we've kind of been through the ringer, most of us. Yeah, been through the ringer. And been through the ringer. What does that mean for you in terms of working with small businesses? Um, sure. We, I like to say that um, you meet us in your blue jeans and on your work sites, and we're, you're going to meet us with our dogs, with our kids, um, but we'll always be, it's the best way, we'll, we're, we'll always be authentic with yeah. you and we'll always be real with you um, and we expect the same from our clients. Yeah, excellent, great. Um, so can you make, in relationship to that, can you name some of the biggest mistakes that small business owners make when they start a business? Yeah, the number one mistake that we see is that small business owners don't have their documents in order. You know, it is so easy in this state to initially set up an LLC or a corporation. You just go online with the State Corporation Commission and you pay your registration fee and you have this magical business. But there's so much more to it than that. Mm -hmm. um, can you, you tell me a little bit about that? Like what other things should small businesses have? What other documents? Yeah, the number one document that every small business should have is an operating agreement. Even if you are a, a sole proprietor and you're a one person shop, um, that allows banks and your customers to show that you are serious about your work. Um, that this doesn't combine into your personal. And we know that for small business owners, it is their life, but it needs to be separated from their personal accounts. Okay. Um, and that is a huge issue is because you end up combining everything into your basket. Um, we like, we have a saying that a small business needs to look like a duck and quack like a duck. Um, it helps with liability. It helps with professionalism. Um, it helps kind of just separate. It's just a Huge, huge deal. Um, the other piece of paper that a lot of small businesses don't have is a buy-sell agreement when there are multiple partners. And that lists things like succession planning and what happens if one of the partners leave. Um, having those kind of lined up is crucial. Yeah, I can see that. Um, the other mistake that a lot of small businesses make is when they start hiring employees they don't have proper employment policies. Hmm. Um, and given that the many, many recent changes in Virginia employment law um, that give employees a lot more um, power to sue in state court, for instance, having documentation and policies that are transparent um, is gonna be really, really crucial to protect your business. 
Well, so that leads me to my next question is, what are some of the changes in the law that business, small businesses should be aware of? Sure, there, let's get back to the one I was just speaking about. In 2020, Virginia made wide scale changes um, to the Whistleblower Protection Act and their independent contractor rules and the um, Human Rights Act, which prevents discrimination in employment and other public services. So with the whistleblower protection, you can now sue in state court if you were discharged or otherwise affected by a demotion or, or something similar in, in your company. You can sue in state court um, that you were negatively affected because you spoke out about something that was happening in the company that was illegal or unethical. The other major change is that the, um, the Human Rights Act was expanded to include um, broader protections on gender and age and sexual orientation. Um, and again, you can now, employees can now sue in state court if they, if they fear that they've been discriminated against. Okay, so how, what do you do to help protect the business from being sued? So the big thing is that one of the things that we just talked about was our documentation. You need to have solid policies in place that are posted that show that you do not discriminate. Obviously documentation isn't enough. You need to work to have cultures of um, support um, I think about ombudsman systems. When an employee feels like they are being harassed or that they're not getting opportunities because of their gender or their age or their sexual orientation or their race, um, having proper channels for those can be discussed in a confidential manner and having solid investigation practices in your company is, is gonna be really important. Yeah. And we can help you set those policies up. Right. So there's a whole lot more to starting a business than just saying, you know, putting. I'm ready. I'm ready to hang my shingle. Yeah. Yeah. So in order to protect yourself, you need to be able to take these kinds of steps. Um, so how can, I mean, a, a an attorney is not cheap. So how can uh, a small business maximize its legal budget? And especially with Dan Dunlap Wall. Love this question. Um, it is one of our major goals to make um, legal services accessible to even the smallest businesses. Um, we work with our clients to budget for legal services. Um, and we also kind of get, we have really creative solutions for small businesses to access legal services. Our new program that just launched this year was our subscription plans. And for as low as $300 a month, you can have unlimited access to your primary attorney and have certain deliverables. Okay. And considering something like a master service agreement can cost somebody up to $4,000 or an employment handbook can cost that, that amount. Um, those are included in some of our subscription plans. Wow. Um, and that's a huge deal. We're also launching in the next few months something called Small Business Century. And that will allow um, for a much even smaller fee for small business owners to come and ask us confidential questions um, in a group setting um, and get access to an attorney and our very capable paralegal who can work through some of the issues with you. Um, we're very excited about that and, and we can't wait to put that out. Um, it's been in the works for, for several years. Okay, so that, that brings me to my last question. And, and that is, I was thinking maybe small businesses think I don't, I don't really need to pay an attorney every month if I don't have something going on. So are there recurring issues that small businesses have to deal with that would likely involve you more than every month? So, so our goal is to be a partner in your firm. And so what we have found is that 
so many businesses miss even smaller risk areas. Mm. And so one of the things I love about our subscription plans is that it pro- even at the smallest level it provides unlimited access to your attorney. And so we will set up, um, I, I am aiming it to be about quarterly. Okay. Um, meetings with all my subscription clients, but we can certainly do it more than that, even every six weeks to just go through the goals of your businesses and see where the potential weak spots are. We have found that um, the biggest expense when you're dealing with a lawyer are phone calls and emails. Yeah. And this cuts that cost down tremendously and it helps um, prevent risk before there's, there's an issue. So that for us is invaluable. And we yeah. help- Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. And we help small businesses can see that value. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I was thinking is that what you're actually doing, your plan of action is a plan of prevention. Exactly. My dad was a um, country nurse practitioner. Um, And I kind of based this model off of country medicine. You know, you have your annual or biannual checkups and just you know, do the lab work and then you can prevent issues or control issues before they become yeah. major health concerns. Yeah. And that's, that's really kind of our goal. Yeah. I like that. I think that makes a whole lot of sense. And that way you can avoid litigation, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing you need to know about us is that we are risk preventers. We are not risk managers, um, but we have a ton of partners. If you do get into trouble, that we can refer you to for litigation. Yeah, I love that, Anna. That's great. That's great. Is there anything else that you want to add about Dunlap Law or yourself in terms of working with people in business? No, I, I all except to say that I really love our firm. You know, <laughs> I um, will extol it from the rooftops. I think we're doing some really innovative things. Um, you know, I this is really the first time in my career I can honestly say I just love my job I love hearing small business owner stories and how they got to where they are um and I like to protecting their assets and what they've worked so hard for um so this is really a dream opportunity for me yeah thank you thank you for the work you do we appreciate it so if and I'll, I'll also put this information um in the newsletter but if someone wants to reach you and talk to you more about this, how do they get in touch with you? So they can send me an email and we can put that information here in the, the video, correct? Mm-hmm. Um, or they can call my direct line um, or our main office line and, and we'll have both up. Okay, that sounds great. And I'll also um, put that information yeah, it, below the video. Would that be all I right? really appreciate that, Susan. Yeah. Thanks so oh, much. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just really excited to have you here and to have this kind of business law attorney um, available to help small business. Well, I appreciate it. It's been great being here in the Valley, specifically doing this work. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Okay, <laughs> that's it for our 10-minute takeaway today. Um, stay tuned. We'll have some more. Um, and thank you again, Adam. Bye.